Well, good day, folks. Had the night off from work, so figured we'd come out into the shop and make a little video. Not too much going on. Got uh, a couple things slated out here. I'm finishing up making this door. Uh, making a set of sliding sliding doors for a uh, closet in the house. Uh, in that room that I put the uh, log bed into. Been working on that for quite some time now and just haven't had the energy to finish it up. Uh, I want to get this uh, this old Curtis cab uh, refinished, repainted, and then mounted on the white before winter. Uh, I can pretty much guarantee I'm not going to have that done before the snow falls. <laughs> uh, as hard as I try, I just don't think I'm going to have time. But got a lot of stuff to do yet before the snow falls. Got to get the tiller off the back of there. Uh, get the snow blower mounted, tire chains put on. Probably change the oil on this thing. I don't think I changed the oil since I did the engine swap in it. Uh, what else do I got to do? Might put the three-point blower on the Mitsubishi. Haven't used that yet. Haven't really had enough snow to justify using it. Um, but we'll see what happens this year. Um, been leaving the old F-250 outside recently just to get some more space in here. Uh, to do do some stuff. I've said it a million times. I never thought I would have packed this shop full. I think it's like 36 by 40 or something like that and yeah, when we bought the place never thought I would have had it, had it full, but uh, You know here we are I guess when you have have the room you uh, find a way to fill it So hoping to get some work done on the old f-150 uh, this winter. It's been about a year since I've touched that thing uh, So definitely do for a little one-on-one uh, -on -one time with that Hoping to, I don't know, it'll probably be December before I get to it because uh, we got gun deer season coming up here pretty quick and that's going to consume a lot of my time. And Got to do a couple more bow hunts before, uh, before the snow falls and probably even after the snow falls, but man, when it's hunting season, it's hunting season. Everything else gets pushed aside. But This summer kind of just got eaten up with work and uh, doing stuff to the house and when I picked up all this old... Uh, Machining equipment that that took a uh, took up a lot of my time just getting all the tooling sorted and put away and You know kind of getting everything whipped back into usable condition uh, This surface grinder. I'm gonna end up getting rid of I think I just I don't have a use for it I don't see myself ever using it uh, There's nothing that I can't do with the mill that I could do with this and you, you know what I'm trying to say The mill and the lathe are really all that I need. This is just kind of taking up space and I just I don't ever see myself using it it's not like I'm going to be uh, running a business or anything here. Um, you know, everything that that I do, all my old restorations and restorations and whatnot, uh, can uh, pretty much be handled with uh, the lathe and the mill. But anyway, I'll stop yakking and get to the point here. Yeah, so I don't know where I left off with the old index, uh, the old Model 40H here. I think last time we talked about it, I was slapping that eBay special motor on there. But um, anyway, yeah, that's a just a Dayton motor uh, that I picked up off eBay for like 120 bucks. Uh, got it mounted, put back in place. Got a pulley on there. That pulley is slightly smaller than the one that was on there. I think that's a five inch, and what was on there was a five and a half, possibly. Um, so that's gonna mess with my speeds a little bit. But I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. I guess we'll find out. I'm definitely not an expert as to, you know, whether or not that would matter, but, um, you know, it's long and short of it is it's not going to matter that much. Um, and that motor, I think the RPMs on it is not exactly what the old one was. Uh, let's see. Oh no, it is. Yeah, it's a 1725 and that's what the, uh, the old, old motor was, but yeah, that, uh, subtle, Size difference in uh, pulley diameter is going to make a bit of a difference in our speed, but shouldn't be too bad. Um, sourced some new belts for it, or at least one new belt. Uh, grabbed one from Tractor Supply the other day when I was there. And uh, yeah, ended up finding a couple of tool holders. I think there was three different ones in there, and this one is an old... Like, uh, what is it? It's a Y collet style. Um, from what I can find on the internet, it's pretty, I don't want to say rare or unique, but um, they're, they're definitely not, the collets are not a dime a dozen. I found a, a set on eBay the other day and it was pretty, pretty expensive. I don't remember how expensive it was, but I want to say it was like $250 or something like that. 
and again i don't know maybe that's normal i don't know enough about this stuff to know what's expensive and what's not but uh, just seemed kind of up there for what i would want to spend right now and to be honest you know everything that came came with this i'll just i'll be able to make it work with everything that i'm going to need to do but anyway yeah uh just got a what is that maybe a three quarter inch or five eighth inch end mill in there right now i don't even know not even sure what size it is but it doesn't uh doesn't matter too much at the moment anyway um yeah i didn't clean up this vice very well yet so i think when we're done here just testing it out i want to pop that off there and uh just give it a good clean like i did the rest of it um this thing is definitely not in good condition it's in usable condition but it's not great um the saddle has significant wear like i said in the original video about this thing um and i mean most of the axes are pretty um they've got a lot of slop in them so but i mean for making parts and stuff for old garden tractors it's it is what it is i'm not going to worry about it i don't think i'm going to go to the lengths of uh you know re-scraping everything but who knows maybe one day i'll get bored and i'll uh, decide to take on the project but for now it's just uh pretty freaking cool that uh i got this thing working again i think it's a mid 40s model so it's you know coming up on 80 years old here right yeah 80 years old yep um got this new switch uh, all wired up mounted in here grabbed that off of amazon i think it was like 10 bucks or something like that uh wired it up with all new so cord um and then just kind of ran it permanently semi-permanently along the wall over to my outlet there so i'm uh, pretty happy with the setup so far so uh what do you say we throw a block of metal in there and see what she does all right so i got a little block of steel here all i know is it's steel don't know what kind of steel it is but it's obviously not stainless Lock that up in the vise. Oh, let's see here. That unlocked. This unlocked. And I'll say it again, I am not an expert. I'm hardly even a novice when it comes to this stuff. Uh, but, you know, feel free to make fun of me down there in the comments. Let me know what I'm doing wrong, because, again, I really don't have any idea what I'm doing here. But, I mean, I have a little bit of an idea. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you i know exactly what i'm doing but so all i want to do is just kind of make a face cut along the top of this and just see what it does um you know i'll just take the rust off the top and and that's good enough for me just to test it out for now i um, just want to see how it's gonna uh react and you know if the motor is gonna bog down i mean i know i'm not gonna be able to take huge cuts with this thing anyway uh, nor would i want to just because of how much slop is in um, all the different different axes so I think the name of the game here is going to be uh, small bites. So um, right now I have the quill zeroed out. Yeah, zeroed out. And all I want to do, I think, is what I would want to do is just kind of touch the part off to the end mill there. And then that way, from that point, um, you know, I'll know how much I'm taking off. I'd say that's pretty damn close to zeroed right there. Yeah, I'm just scratching the surface of the steel. So we'll call that zeroed. Go ahead and lock that in place. I don't know, I guess you'd call that the knee. <laughs> Still uh, getting up to date with my terminology here. But yeah, I think that's good. Um, so then all I'm going to do is flip the machine on and then run the table to the right but we're probably just going to try and take off about five thousandths at a time and just see what happens from there so make sure you guys got a good view here and then we'll fire it up tighten up my belt and we should be good to go All right, 
just dropped it five thousandths and we'll see if we take anything off there. And throw a little bit of oil on the top. Probably should have had the table locked down. There we go. Wasn't quite centered on the top of it, so I'm gonna move it back. I just did move it back, and now I'm gonna take another pass here. honest with you. I don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah, that's definitely the first thing you should do too right after you get done you know making a pass is drag your finger across the nice sharp edge. That's probably smart. Yeah, I mean, all in all, I don't know, that doesn't look too bad to me. I mean, for a piece of uh, equipment, you know, made back in 1943, 44, that, uh, I can't complain. I mean, kind of interested to see what it's going to do, trying to take a larger bite out of something, but, um, you know, like I said, I don't think I would ever try and take more than like an eighth inch out of something at a time. Um, I just don't know that this thing has the, uh, I mean the motor might have the power but I'm kind of concerned about I guess stability in the quill and is, you know, I, I mean in my clamping setups too maybe, I don't know. Yeah, 
I mean, we'll work up to, uh, to bigger cuts, but, um, you know, it kind of all depends on what I, what I need, I guess. But all in all, for not having a power feed table or anything and just manually doing that by hand, I mean, for the first cut, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I'll, I'll get you guys a little bit of a closer look here. Yeah, I mean, for my first time using it, I mean, that looks pretty decent. Again, not really going for any kind of uh, accuracy or anything like that. Didn't take measurement or anything. Uh, that was just, like I said, zeroing out the quill, uh, touching off to the uh, bottom of the end mill, and then just taking five thousandths off uh, on, the, uh, on the quill dial there. Just went from zero down five thousandths, and that's the uh, the finish that we ended up with. So she uh, she got a long ways to go yet. Like I said, I kind of want to get this vise cleaned up, shined up a little bit, and get all those other metal chips out of there. Um, I really, yeah, you know, I never cleaned up the vise like I did the rest of it, so that needs a little bit of uh, attention. And then I got to get the thing leveled too. Um, I don't have the the base has uh, leveling bolts on it. I don't know how. You know what kind of accuracy I'm going to be able to get with those, but again, this is something that I'm just going to be using to make parts for my lawn mowers and or, you know my lawn tractors and my my tractor and I, you know whatever else I might need around the house here and the the property and stuff like that. But I'm not going to be using it to make parts. Although I'm sure a veteran machinist would probably be able to uh, would probably be able to make this work pretty well, um, along with the old south bend here um, like i said feel free to make fun of me in the comments teach me something i don't know what the hell i'm doing um but this is how i learn i guess that's probably going to do it for tonight um don't really have much else to do um you know i'm not working on anything right now um as far as a restoration or a rebuild or anything like that nothing crazy anyway that i need to make parts for um, so I'm not going to waste metal just milling stuff to mill stuff, but, um, you know, maybe this winter if I get bored or, you know, once I actually start another project, um, I have some stuff in mind that I want to do to the white garden tractor that's sitting over there right now, the one with the tiller on it and that I use for snow removal. And then I have another one out in the yard barn that I had used uh, in the past for just mowing the lawn and stuff like that, but that one is in dire need of attention. Um, could probably just use a complete rebuild, tear down, build it back up. Um, I don't know. I'd probably just go ahead and throw a Predator engine in it. Um, or, I don't know, I've been looking at those diesels on Amazon for like 250 bucks, but, um, a couple videos ago, I think I, when I did the review on the Dereal chainsaw, someone in the comments was giving me shit for buying uh, buying Chinese, and I mean, I completely understand it. I, I don't like to do it myself, but um, when it comes down to saving money, sometimes it's just what you got to do. But yeah, I mean, anyway, in relation to, uh, to rebuilding that tractor, I don't know. I mean, God, yeah, as, as much as you try to avoid buying stuff that's not made in the U.S., it's just pretty much damn near impossible. I think the dude is ripping on me because I bought that chainsaw and didn't buy a, a steel instead or something like that. It's like, well, Jesus Christ, dude, steel has factories in China, too. I mean, I know some other stuff is made in the U.S., but it's not like it's all made here. So it's, it doesn't matter what you do. Um, buying foreign is pretty much just a fact of life these days, um, as much as you hate it. But anyway, yeah, I don't know what I'll do with, um, with that garden tractor. I'm, I'm going to do something with it. Uh, it just depends on how much money I want to spend. Like I said, it'd be real fun to just throw like a, you know, 23 horse Briggs Vanguard in there, but those are running like $1,600 last time I checked, and I think that was over six months ago that I looked, so who knows what those are running now, but um, we'll figure something out. Nah, not that, uh, not that, not that vital, not that important right now, um, but really want to get some work done on the F-150, and I think that's probably going to be the next thing that I make a video on, not 100% sure yet, but we'll uh, just have to see what happens, I guess.
And with that, I guess I'll close out the video. As always, I get kind of long-winded, but that's just because I got stuff to say. So for those of you that stuck around to the end, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.